These harmonic robot actuators may be small, but they're super strong. I'm gonna be going into exactly how these work. So this actuator that I'm holding here is from the company called My Actuator. They have this motor here that I'm holding, which is called the RH-14-100. This 100 here is the 100 to 1 gear ratio because of the harmonic gearbox, which I'll talk about later on. But here you can see that there's a lot of different options for communication. Here we have EtherCAT in and out on the left. And then on the right, we have the CAN. There's two CAN ports here. You can see there's a high and low. And we also have a power. There's two power here of plus and minus. And then right here is a battery backup because they have an absolute encoder. So this is really good because the issue with incremental encoder is that you'll lose position. But with this battery backup, you only need to home your robot once and you'll know exactly where you are. And there's also a little LED light here that will give you some feedback in terms of how it's uh, operating. If it's green, then it means that it's good. So another really nice feature about these actuators is that it's dual encoder. You can see it's labeled here, uh, dual EN. But what's nice about dual encoders is that if you have certain control algorithms where you're interested in the output location, so typically there's an encoder for controlling the motor and then another encoder for controlling the output. But you can imagine for certain applications where you might want to have force feedback, but you don't have any force sensors, then knowing the exact location of your output could actually allow you to do some interesting control algorithms. So that is pretty useful. And another thing is that you can see here, this is a hollow shaft. Hollow shaft motors are great because you can imagine if you have more than one daisy chain, this allows you to pass cables through there. So like, for example, if you have power cables that need to go to another motor, you could easily like slip it through like this. So this is super nice. It, it makes the wiring a lot easier because without this hole, uh, you'll have to have the wire on the outside. So this makes pass through cables really nice. And you can see here we have the mounting holes here. So these mounting holes will be the holes that will be on something uh, stationary. If it's on a robot, it's not really stationary, but the main idea is you have the motor that's relative to something, and then you have the output. This, this part is the output, the silver part. So this silver part, this is where you would want to mount the linkage that you want to attach to it with these holes here. So if you look here, you can actually see that they're threaded. So you just put your screws here and thread in. The ones on the outside are through holes. So you would need to have your threads on the part you're mounting. But the reason why we're able to pack so much power into such a little form factor is because of the harmonic gearbox in here. This harmonic gearbox has a 100 to 1 gear ratio, and let's take a look at how harmonic gears work. So this video here from Harmonic Drive, you could see the internals of this harmonic gearbox. So there is the wave generator, the middle is a flex spine, and on the right is a circular spine. So all these parts work together, and you can see that this part has bearings in it. And you can see here that when it spins, it makes this oscillating motion. So you can see it's going like up, down, up, down. And this is what causes the gear ratio to generate a uh, hundred to one. But you can see that this part here, it has these little teeth that actually interacts with the part. So here you can see that when it meshes together, this is the outer gear. So this outer gear is a part that's gonna interact with the teeth as it's riding, making that oscillation motion. So here you can see the oscillation motion that I'm talking about. It's only making two points of contact at any given time. So you can see that it makes this interesting motion as it's turning. And here's a close-up of how it looks like when it's moving. So you can see that it's making contact and oscillating back and forth. If you're looking to create your own robot but don't have access to a 3D printer or a CNC, you can go ahead and check out PCBWay, the sponsor of this video. So all you need to do is come over here to the CNC and 3D printing tab, go ahead and choose 3D printing for example, and all you need to do is drop in the part that you want and just go ahead and fill out this information here like the quantity, the type of material, they have resin, nylon, PLA, and so on, and some of this other information. But what's really nice is that they have really fast shipping time that takes only two to three business days. So there's a lot of different options for the RH motors. The one I'm looking at is the RH14, but there's also the 17 and 20, which I'll be using later on in some of my projects, building a robot arm. But here you can see that this one, the 14, this is the one I'm using. They have the option here based on the code name, uh, with or without brakes. The one I'm using doesn't have brakes. 
But if you look here at the specs, we see that the input voltage is 48, the no load speed is 30 RPM. We have a rated speed of 25 RPM. The rated torque is at 11 Newton meters, which is really high. We also have a rated current at 6.5 amps. And then we can see that the rated power is 100 watts. So this is a pretty capable motor to build a strong robot. Okay, so here we're inside their setup software application here. You want to go ahead and make sure to choose one for the communication ID and then click set ID. Once you set ID, you could connect it. So I've already wired everything and powered it up. So you could go ahead and connect and then it'll show connected when it's connected. Then you could disconnect if you don't want to connect anymore. But here you can see it shows some of the information about the motor, the motor name, the firmware version, factory time, and the reduction ratio. Here it says it's actually a 101. So it's pretty close to 100, but pretty much the same thing. Now, if we come over here to the motor running tab, we can see the actual motor. There's different control modes here. We have position, increment, speed, and current. So if I go ahead and go to the speed mode, I could start to command it. So, so I'll give it something like 500 RPM. So this is going to be the speed on the input side. So the output is actually going to be 5 RPM. So you got to do the reduction ratio because of the gear. So I'm going to go ahead and start this up now. Ta-da! So you can see the motor is moving now. Um, this is at 500. You can see the plot is being plotted here. The yellow here that you can see that is really noisy, that's the current plot. Uh, the blue is a speed plot, which is trying to maintain at 500. And the position is in the red here. So you can see that it's kind of going back and forth, I think, because it's plotting the incremental here. That's why it's oscillating. But if you were to plot the absolute, then it would just keep going. Okay, So here you can see that if I ramp it up, let's go ahead and increase this to 1,000 here. So it should go twice as fast. And you can see, yes, it's moving twice as, twice as fast here now. So that's good. Let's see if we make it a little bit faster. Make this uh, 2000 here. And it's moving even faster now. Right now it's actually drawing, uh, I'm looking at my multimeter here or my power supply is drawing about 14 watts here. So that's qu quite a bit, but you can see it's really strong. It's pretty much, you can't really stop it. There's a lot of torque here that it's generating, but uh, let me just go ahead and slow it down again. Come back down to 500. But now let's go ahead and play with some of the different modes here. I'm gonna stop it really quick. Uh, here you can see that we could also control it in current. So current, you could set some amperage here. So I'll start off small, give it 0.5 amps. And if I go ahead and hit start, you can see this is running at 0.5 amps. So you can see I'm able to stop it if I push it really hard. Um, that's because if my the force I'm exerting overcomes that current, then it'll stop. So uh, this one's actually a little bit hard to stop. So if I bring it down a little bit to like 0.25, for example, um, 0.25 is actually too small to move, but you can see that the breakaway torque is probably a little bit higher than 0.25 because this is barely moving. So it's probably the breakaway torque is probably a little bit under, but you can see that I could get it to start moving and it'll turn a little bit. So somewhere around, I would say like 0.35 amps is gonna be the minimum for it to start moving. So you can see this is where it starts moving. And because this is the bare minimum to make it start moving, it's pretty easy for me to stop the motion. So if I do something much higher, say like for example, uh, point, Let's just give it like one one amp, for example. So you can see at one amp, it's going pretty fast. So this will be definitely pretty hard to stop. You can see I would need a much larger lever arm to stop something moving this fast. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and control it in position mode. So we're just going to oscillate it between negative 50 and 50. And then we're going to set the speed to be 1000. So if I start the motor, you're going to see it turns. And then once it reaches position, it'll stop. I make it positive and then it'll turn again. So this is a really nice way to make sure that your motor is working inside of their setup software, but they also have an option to control it using Python and ROS. If you're new to ROS, you could go ahead and check out some of the resources I have on my channel. This is a playlist I put together. So if you come here to the My Actuator RMD, they have a C++ and Python SDK that you can use. You could go ahead and check this out. A lot of my videos later on will be using this, so you could get familiar with this to follow along. All right, so if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.